Welcome to the newest edition of the Giants Little Podcast, brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants. John Schmelk with you. Today's guest, you might know him as JJ After Dark in his previous life. He is John Dostremski. You'll find him at SNY, The Ringer, and a bunch of other stuff, too. JJ, what's up, man? It's good to see you, bro. John, it's great to be here. Believe it or not, I have a confession for you right out of the gate. This is my first ever appearance at training camp. So give me your impression. Uh, it's pretty darn cool. Now, <laughs> I mean, look, I don't know how much I can gauge from what I'm seeing in seven-on-seven seven drills, and I think the giant coaching staff is going to have a much better feel for what they see as opposed to what I see. But listen, I think there are a whole lot of people for the Giants and the Jets respectively fired up about the start of this year. I mean, the Giants last year exceeded expectations. They go and win a playoff game on the road, and like, there's a lot to feel good about, and the coach did a fantastic job. Daniel Jones got his contract. Saquon's here, so everybody's ready to go, dude. Now, we're recording this on Thursday, so the Jets will play their game later on tonight. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we don't expect Aaron Rodgers, anyone like that, to play. But you did have one takeaway from practice say, that you threw at me walking into the studio. Yes. Um. So, I don't want to get nuts, but like being on the field and watching these guys for the first time, Hyatt is fast, dude. <laughs> He's, uh, like somebody, somebody asked me a few minutes ago, they're like, JJ, your fresh eyes. First day of training camp. What did you see? I'm like, Jalen Hyatt is fast. Really, really fast. Yeah, so he, he ran by two guys for deep post today. If he can be the guy that can give them that sort of vertical threat, I mean, you think about it. They won nine games last year with a makeshift group where, you know, you got guys off the street playing wide receiver, and they ended up stepping up and having good roles for this team. But if you could go and add a speedster out of the SEC, go add a guy like Waller, who, when he is on the field, is one of the more dynamic tight ends in football – John offense might have a different look to it this year, John. Yeah, we were talking about it in terms of the schedule being a lot tougher this year. So in order for the Giants to keep pace with last season or perhaps maybe even do a little bit better, what in your mind, J.J., is the one thing they need to be better at? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's twofold. Number one, it's scoring points. That's where the NFL is at. I know that's really simplistic, no, but you're not wrong. if you want to be a team that's contending for the playoffs year in and year out, it's tough to win games 17-13, 13-10, to 10. the Giants were able to win a lot of close games last year, and I credit their coaching staff for that. I credit their resolve for that. But if you're going to go and take the next step, you got to have more consistent offensive output. So I would say, number one, it's scoring points consistently. Number two, forcing turnovers, which is something they did a great job of yeah. last year in making those, those big type of plays. Like, think about that Baltimore game. They pulled that game out of the fire – because they forced turnovers in the fourth quarter or the Washington game, which you could argue was the biggest win of the season last year. Kayvon Thibodeau, strip sack, touchdown, boom, changes the whole feel and dynamic. And I know a lot of that is luck. And, you know, I know sometimes the analytics say that's going to even out over the course of a year. But if you could be a defense that is opportunistic and yeah. is forcing a whole lot of turnovers, you're going to be a winning football team. Turnovers dictate wins and losses more than anything else. We all know this. Um, you talk about Daniel Jones, right? Ran the ball really well last year. It was a huge part of his success. Want to see the passing game become a little bit more explosive? That's how you score points, to your point, right? And be more consistent. How much do you think the new set of wide receivers will help? Is it more protection for you? What does Jones need to do better to kind of maybe leap into that second tier of quarterbacks in the NFL? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I, I do think these talented skill position guys that they have should take him to another level. I think if you see... A lot of the same things you saw from Daniel Jones last year, and he improves upon that, and he kind of masters Brian Dable's offense that much more. Remember, this is a guy going into last year what was a prove-it year for him. Brand spanking new offense. you got to learn all that terminology. Yeah. you got to learn all the ins and outs, and he really did a great job of it. He took care of the football, but seeing some more big plays, which is not necessarily all on him. I think the guys they have brought in, whether it's Waller, whether it's Hyatt, whether it's Paris Campbell— these are guys that can go and get it down the field. And he could throw a really good deep ball. So yeah. that, to me, is something I want to see. Um, and just continue to take care of the football. I know that was something he came on me once a week last year. And he said from the get-go, i got to do a better job of that. And I think we saw over the course of, what, the 17 games that they played, he did do a better job of that. So continue to play turnover-free football, but hit those big plays. And we know the running back value conversation is this debate. We've all been talking about on all of our shows, right? But how important is that Saquon back in this offense this year and how much that helps Daniel? Well, and the idea, too, that he's here now, that you don't have that distraction going into the end of August where it's like, oh, is Saquon going to be here? If he's here, what kind of shape? We all knew 
that Saquon Barkley was going to play week one because, like, he's a football guy. He yep. loves this. This is what he lives for. Um, obviously wants to be fairly compensated, of course. Running back, debate, uh, we've been there, done that. But having him here, knowing he's ready to go, knowing he has something to prove once again, yeah, I mean, the Giants look like a different team when he's doing his thing on the field. The Giants Huddle is brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants. From game day to every day, Citizens is made ready for Giant fans with insights, guidance, and solutions. Learn more at citizensbank.com. And, JJ, what I think has Giant fans really excited is that you see room for improvement, not only because of the new additions like you talked about. You want to see progress from the young guys they drafted the last couple of years, right? Evan Neal last year's first-round pick. Kayvon Thibodeau last year's first-round pick. Aziz Ojolari, who had a really good rookie year, Hurt most of last year. You mentioned the rookies. Xavier McKinney's going to hit a contract year. They have a lot of young guys that the arrow could be pointing up on. Oh, no doubt. And you know this about the Giants. When they've been at their best as a franchise, that pass rush has been a major, major factor. So I am so intrigued with a guy like Thibodeau because he loves New York. He's got like this oh, he persona. Loves he loves everything about the idea of getting the attention, the limelight, showing up in big games, which to me is something, there's something to be said for it. Listen, every every game is a big game in the NFL. But when you're playing under the scrutiny of those primetime lights and he's putting on a show like he did hey, against Washington yeah, last and year. And Baltimore too, right? Excellent yeah. point. Mm-hmm. And that was a big game against the Ravens. I think he can take his game to another level. And Ojolari, you bring up a great point. Missed a whole lot of last year. And he really was having one hell of a start came back, made a difference. Like, that's a guy I have to – can those guys go and be a force consistently in Martindale's defense getting after the quarterback? What do you – from – I'm so close to it. I can't get a feel for it. Give me your take on Wink's defense. And as someone that watches a lot of the league, and we're going to get to the league in a second, what do you think of Wink's defense, his approach, and how it kind of matches with what they're trying to do? Here? It's aggressive. That's what I like, man. The idea that he's like, all right, these are my guys. I'm running my system. You're going to buy in if you go and put that giant uniform on. And they had an identity. That, to me, is very important when you're a defense or an offensive unit. The idea that you know what they're going to be, you know what they're all about. Super important. All right, now let's go around the league a little bit real quick. NFC East, here's the problem. It's a monster. Monster. This ain't going to be easy. And by the way, people just like to dismiss the commanders, and I get it because of the quarterback. Their roster's not bad either. It's not, and that's the thing. The Giants are in a position where I think their team is definitely more talented than where they were a year ago. Are they going to be able to go and get themselves to the postseason? Well, it means they got to be a lot better. That's the, that's just the standard that you have in this division. They were one four and one in the division. Last well, year. and you got to find a way to beat the Cowboys, or the Eagles, and I'm not saying you got to go and sweep those teams. Well, if you want to win the division, that's something you have to do. But you can't go and four against those teams because right. then. You look at the remainder of the Giants' schedule, that's a big difference this year to last year. And look, analyzing schedules is very dangerous you never in know early who's August. Be because, and all that stuff. Listen, yeah, yeah. last year, people would say, oh, Denver, that's going to be a really tough game. Yeah. Denver stunk. They were one of the worst teams in the league. Dude, I remember like 10 years ago, we we're, were anticipating Aaron Rodgers, then Scott Tolzien, the starting quarterback for the Packers, coming in here. So it happens all the time. It can happen, but, but yes. you have the AFC East now as opposed to the AFC South. The Giants last year. Went 4-0 against the AFC South, which I think most people would agree is one of the worst divisions in the NFL. The AFC is the worst team currently in the division, at least according to Vegas, and I think that'll end up being the case. It's still a team coached by the greatest NFL head coach (laughs) of all time. So that's what the Giants have staring them in the face. Got to win in the division and know that they're taking it up a notch in weight class with some of the teams they're going to be playing. Now, here's the good news. We talk about the division. Eagles, Cowboys, I'll put the Niners in there, too. We'll put those three teams and put them aside as the class of the NFC, right? I think that's fair. Yes. After that, I mean, would it surprise anyone if the Giants were the fourth best team No, there's the opportunity. No, no question. I mean, so just give me the breakdown on kind of the rest in the NFC. Well, I mean, you think about it. Two teams for sure are going to come out of the division, you would think. I think there's a very good chance a third team, like Like last last year, year. Mm -hmm. finds a way to come out of the division. I I guess the NFC is interesting. Who is going to step up in that North? Are you buying the Lions? Like, the Lions were terrific down the stretch last year. This is still a team that hasn't won a playoff game in like 50-something years. You know what I mean? So, like, it's been a long time coming for the Detroit Lions. And I'm curious to see how they handle that role of being, like, the favorite and the hunted Green Bay, people are sleeping on them. I have no idea what you're getting out of Jordan Love. I don't think they know what they're getting out of Jordan Love, by the way. I'll tell you a team that I think is going to be better this year. Chicago. I think she, I, And I'm not saying they're going to be a playoff team. Fields, talented. They had a good draft. They go in ahead. DJ Moore. DJ like, Moore's a big deal. Like, that to me is the sort of team that 
you know, we look at and we say, wow, they're going to be better than people think. I yeah. think Atlanta. Now, the South Division is not getting a second team. No, I mean, the, no, only, they are not. the only way they're going to get a second team is if you have another team maybe go like four and two or five and one. And they kind of bank a bunch of wins. But I like Atlanta because they got a lot of the infrastructure that I'm looking for. They, B. John Robinson, I think, is going to have a monster, monster season. Arthur Smith's a good offensive coach, And he's coach a good too. coach. Yeah. See, I'm out on the Saints. I think Carr is very overrated. I'm out on the Saints. Carolina's interesting, but you're starting a rookie quarterback. I love Bryce Young, but rookie quarterback. It's asking a lot. It's asking a lot. And then Tampa clearly in transition after everything that's transpired losing Tom Brady. So You're not a Baker believer? Uh, you know, <laughs> it, 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 I, he played really well for the Rams. He did. I think he gets a little bit too much grief. I, I, he, the problem is he's the number one overall pick. That's, That's the, the issue. The expectations so are up here. People look right. at what they thought Baker Mayfield was going to be, and they can't fairly grade the body of work that he's put together in the NFL. I mean, after all, say what you want about him. You want a playoff game with the Cleveland Browns. That's yes, right. Not a lot of guys have been able to say that over the, the last way, 40 I years. Beat the Steelers. Yes, he did. Am I not mistaken? Yeah. I mean, the Browns just don't beat. Steelers, they don't. They don't so. beat the Steelers. They don't beat anybody. <laughs> no. So I mean, listen, it didn't go the way Baker Mayfield wanted it to go, but uh, I, I'm just out on the roster. You know, like I kind of feel like you go from having Tom Brady and having these expectations. Now it's like, oh, now what in Tampa? Giant fans love a winner. It's why they love Citizens. Named the 2022 Best Bank in the U.S. by The Banker as the official bank of the Giants and sponsor of the huddle. Citizens is made ready for fans of Big Blue. Learn more at CitizensBank.com. Two more for you, JJ. Sure. AFC. Just the murderer's row of quarterbacks in that conference go from Lamar to Herbert to Mahomes to Josh Allen to Aaron Rodgers to Deshaun Watson to Russell Wilson, and I think I'm even forgetting someone. My that. guy, Tua. Tra- Tua, Trevor, there you go. Trevor Lawrence, more guys. I mean, it is a ridiculous conference. Who's going to be left standing when all said and done? You know, that's a million-dollar question. Um, I think most of the betters are going to put their money on Joe Burrow. I am always very leery of the idea of banking on the team that the public falls in love with. Oh, that's true. Uh, that can be a very dangerous, dangerous proposition. It is the thing about last year, no one was loving the Chiefs because they lost Tyreek Hill and all the receivers. You know what's crazy? I actually think people are sleeping on Buffalo a little I, bit you this know, year. I was going to say that. And I know they got some issues. They lose Tremaine Edmonds. That's a big loss on sure. defense. Uh, their secondary is just getting older. Like Those guys couldn't stay on the field last year. Then you throw in the dynamic between Diggs and Josh Allen and Yo, whatever the hell is going on there. What do you going on there, by the way? I, I have no idea. No idea. I mean, it's been very vague. It's been very weird. But Josh Allen is still, to me, the best quarterback in the division. He's an alien. And he's a freak. And now Buffalo goes from last year where everybody did was picking them to win the Super Bowl. Now, and by the way, it looked pretty good through the first seven, eight games of the yeah. year, too. And then it kind of just fell apart in the second half of the year, fell apart defensively. Injuries, Von Miller, all that stuff. Hurt him. Yeah. I think Buffalo is a team I actually would buy stock in this year, but you could make a case, honestly. And I haven't made the official Super Bowl pick. No, I, I was too early, too early, too but early. But I could look at the AFC and say, I wouldn't be shocked if Buffalo is there. I wouldn't be shocked if Miami's there. I wouldn't be shocked if Cincy or Baltimore is there. I think Cleveland is going to be better this year. Jacksonville, Doug Peterson, Good. great coach. Trevor Lawrence, up and up. And by the way, and that, we didn't even mention the best quarterback and the best player in the sport, Mahomes. And Jacksonville in that division, they might win 13 games in the regular season. Because the division stinks. Unless you tell me that you're buying Tennessee, that Vrabel's going to be able to squeeze out. And he's a good win. coach. But... He is a good coach. It's Ryan Tannehill. It's Ryan Tannehill. So, gut feel right now. I give you two teams I'd pick to go and win the AFC. Buffalo would be one. I don't give you chalk. That's no fun. I'm not giving you Cincy in Kansas City. Do you believe in Baltimore with the new offensive coordinator? So here's my biggest problem with Baltimore and Miami because I think both teams could go to the Super Bowl. Quarterbacks can't stay healthy. Can they stay on the field? If you you could tell me that Lamar Jackson is going to be playing or two is going to be playing December and January games, I'm willing to invest in either one of those teams, especially Baltimore's defense with Roquan Smith and the Dolphins hiring Fangio is a huge deal. I mean, that, like, coaching hires from like a coordinator standpoint, mm-hmm. there may be like five that really, really, really matter. He's one of those five. All right, give me one bold prediction, big surprise that you're banking on heading into this NFL season that maybe is not a popular opinion. Okay, the Cleveland Browns are going to win the AFC North. Ooh, there you go. I like it. Deshaun Watson, full year. The roster is really good. The offensive line and defensive lines can play. No, they're good. And they're 4-1. to one. So, everyone on Cincinnati and Baltimore, how about Cleveland? 
Watch Pittsburgh on the win that division again. Watch. Well, listen, <laughs> never sleep on that, man. I mean, you thought last year was going to be the first losing year for Tomlin. Still figure They go out. from three and seven to nine and eight. The only thing with the Steelers is they beat a lot of bad teams down the stretch. Right. A lot of bad teams. So, like, I like Kenny Pickett. He's a Jersey guy. Like, it's a cool story to root for. Let me see the Steelers now. They got two games with Baltimore without Lamar Jackson. They got the Saints at the end of the year. So, we'll see. Giants a playoff team? Yes. I think they're a 9-8 and eight playoff team. I think the conference, if the Giant fans aren't going to like hearing this, if they were in the AFC, I would not be picking them to make the playoffs. That'd be t- much tougher road. In the NFC, I think they're 1-7. I do. Good stuff, JJ. Pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Sean. John Jaskowski, New York, New York podcast on the radio. Anything right. else you want to pop out there for SNY, the folks? we're everywhere, man. But I don't know. Ring of Gambling Show, we're all over the place, Schmuck. There's too many gigs these days. That's a good thing. He's a busy man. Try JJ, to be. John Jaskowski, thank you for joining us on the Giants Auto Podcast. Brought to you by Citizens. We'll see you next time.